So you, you do have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. There's an old adage that says if you don't plan to succeed, you automatically plan to fail. And in your plan, you need to count up the cost of, uh, of your exercise to overcome the various obstacles in your life. One of the things you have to determine is whether or not uh, your efforts really fit within uh, your value system. Uh, that is, uh, you can overcome an obstacle, but the way you do it, your plan may dictate you do something that violates uh, your principles, and then you fail anyway. You still fail. Secondly, I think, as, as uh, relative to uh, uh, designing a plan, you need to identify all of the necessary resources to uh, bring about in your plan, the resources you're going to use. And then number two, I think you need to adopt uh, an importune spirit. That's, a, that's an old English word that you don't hear used very much here in our Western society. Importune, it means to be tenacious. It means to uh, persevere. It comes from a story in the Bible where the, uh, the widow, a man was uh, contesting with the unjust judge and because uh, she would not give up on her quest to have her issues met, uh, the judge uh, relinquished and said, you know, I'm really going to have to give a solution to this woman's problem. And then also I believe that uh, to be importune, uh, David also, I believe, uh, personified that in his quest to overcome Goliath. After observing the size of the obstacle that he had to overcome, uh, David made some very interesting faith statements by saying, amen, that he just believed that his God would help him to overcome. So I think in order to uh, overcome obstacles, you do have to have a plan. Uh, number three, you need to take risks. You need to be a risk taker, a risk taker. No one has ever changed anything in their lives without taking risks. Uh, during my life, I had to take a number of risks. Uh, uh, my career, before I became a full-time minister, and I was bivocational, uh, I was working in the field of data processing, and uh, I had to take a number of risks. I had to move around the, the uh, country in order to improve my economic capabilities, and that meant taking risks. Sometimes you move into a community you know, you didn't know anybody, uh, and you would hope that everything would work well for you in that company, uh, particularly when you worked on contract and you were hoping that at the end of that particular contract they would extend your contract, if not, you were stranded, and so you had to take risk. And so I took some risk and uh, was blessed. I don't really want to get into all of that. I just want to stay on point here about overcoming obstacles. Um, and then you have to uh, you have to solicit some help um, in in overcoming obstacles. It's it's good, uh, a, a man, uh, to to uh, uh, get some help. Get some people who uh, perhaps have. Uh, uh, going down the road that you're planning on going down, uh, helping, uh, asking for experience help uh, certainly speeds uh, the, the tempo, speeds the, um, uh, the rate of success uh, in accomplishing, if you will, uh, your efforts to overcome your obstacles. Also, it reduces uh, the amount of wheel spinning, the amount of wheel spinning. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can do a lot of wheel spinning in trying to overcome obstacles at times, and, and having someone uh, in your entourage who knows how to do that will help you to reduce that. Also, I think you need to, uh, from my point of view, from my stream of the church, I say you need to ask God for help. I don't think you need to leave your God, however you look at your God, you don't need to leave your God out of anything that you do. I, um, I'm mindful of a passage of scripture that comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 26, which starts off by saying, likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. And I believe that comes, that word help it comes from a Greek word, sunamai tanalambanamai, which means that God will come and take hold together with you against whatever you are against. And so when you are tr trying to overcome an obstacle, you need to get God involved in your life. And I'm here as one who can tell you, amen, down through the years, I spent 20 some years in the business that I was in. But when I got God involved in my life, amen, my career took off like a Roman candle. I went from just being a technician to, 
a man, a junior executive, and then to a full-time executive, I sat in the boardroom of one of the largest companies in the United States. And I got there not because I was so well-educated, I believe, but because I trusted my God. And I said I would give him the glory and the praise. And I don't mind calling the name of the company if I don't get in too much trouble by doing that. But it's public record. But I, I went from a man uh, in, in the beginning of my career. I worked in the uh, mailroom. And uh, there were, in those days, in the early 60s and, and through the 70s and even in the 80s and, and uh, even up until the time that I retired, amen, we uh, had to deal with um, uh, discrimination. But, you know, uh, uh, not allowing, and I, there's a dear brother here who, who uh, uh, feels the same way, I never allowed the color of my skin to be an obstacle for me. Uh, it happened to be an obstacle for other people, but not for me. <laughs> Amen. I was blessed to be born this way, and I thank God for that. Uh, but um, uh, as I was saying, uh, I went from the mail room to the board room, amen, and my career took off uh, just magnificently. And uh, I wound up working for a company called Pillsbury, amen. I was one of their directors when I uh, left and became a full-time pastor. Uh, certainly, uh, number five, the fifth thing I want you to be aware of uh, in overcoming obstacles is don't kill your dream with reality. Don't, 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 don't kill your own dream. Don't, don't be your own worst enemy. That, that happens to us a lot. And, and certainly, if you have a dream, I don't let other people kill my dream. I, uh, I don't let people do that to me. Uh, you just can't allow that to happen. If you have a dream and you've uh, done all your homework and uh, uh, you're prepared to persevere and you're prepared to pay the price that it takes to fulfill that dream, I say go for it because at the end of your life or when you get down to when we say get old, whatever that is, amen, you, uh, you don't ever want to say, I wish I had an auto. Uh, I, I, I said I'll never, be, I'll never do that, and so to this date I haven't uh, uh, done it yet, thank God. And um, I have a... I have a uh, a quote, if you will, that I'm going to mention, and then I'm going to uh, take my seat. Uh, it says, when you come to the end, to the edge of all of the light you know, and if you don't mind, I'll repeat that again. When you come to the edge of all the light you know, and are about to step off into the darkness of the unknown, faith is knowing one of two things will happen. There will be something solid to stand on, or you will be taught how to fly. Keep that in mind. Amen. There will be something there for you to stand on, or you will know how to fly. Amen. And I always try to encourage people, uh, don't run around with yard birds. Find an eagle to fly with. Fly with eagles, and you will overcome every obstacle. Thank you so much for your attention. I do have a question here for you.